Welcome back to the channel. My name is Diego and I hope you're having a great day. In honor of its 50th anniversary, this video is a review of Francis Ford Coppola's 1972 epic crime film, The Grandfather. It was adapted from Mario Puzo's 1969 novel and it was a first time watch for me. And let me tell you, I understand the hype around it. Before I hop into my review, please take a second to like and subscribe and hit the notification bell. We really appreciate it. Lastly, this review will contain spoilers, so continue at your own risk. The movie takes place in 1945 in New York City. Connie, the daughter of Don Vito Corleone, a crime family boss, gets married to Carlo. During the wedding, the Don listens to requests from several characters, most notably Johnny Fontaine, Vito's godson, and a popular singer. The Don shows he means business and helps Fontaine secure a movie role with the help from his consigliere, Tom Hagen, and the severed head of a horse. Around Christmas time, Salazzo, a drug baron backed by the Tatagalia, another crime family, asks the Don for an investment. The Don declines and this slowly starts a crime family war. The Don's enforcer, Luca Brasi, is murdered and Vito himself is violently gunned down. Despite being shot several times, the Don survives and is hospitalized. Sonny, the Don's eldest son, takes command and aggressively hunts Salazzo and puts a hit on Tatagalia's son. In the meantime, Michael, the Don's youngest son, thwarts another attempt on his father and comes into conflict with Captain McCluskey of the New York PD, Salazzo's unofficial bodyguard. The Corleones devise a plot to murder Salazzo and McCluskey, so they feign a truce, providing Michael the opportunity to gun them down in a Bronx restaurant. After the murder, the NYPD cracks down on major crime families in the area, but it's not enough to keep a war from breaking out. Michael takes refuge in Sicily, and one of his brothers, Fredo, is sheltered in Las Vegas by gangster Mo Green. Shortly after, Connie tells her brother Sonny that Carlo is abusing her, so he beats him and warns him to not do it again. Being the scumbag that he is, Carlo abuses her again, and while Sonny goes after him, he's ambushed at a highway toll and gunned down. In Sicily, Michael meets and falls in love with Apollonia, who he marries, but a car bomb intended for him ends her life. Don Corleone, devastated by Sonny's death, attempts to end the war and assures the crime families he will not oppose the drug business. As time passes, Michael returns home and marries his girlfriend from the start of the film, Kay, and has has two children with her. With Don Corleone nearing the end of his life, Michael takes the family reins. He looks to move the family business to Las Vegas and buy out Mo Green's stake in the family casinos, but the two of them do not come to agreeable terms. A while later, Don Corleone suffers a fatal heart attack. Before he passed, he warned Michael that whoever approached him with an offer from the other families would be a traitor to the Corleones. At the funeral home, former Corleone member Tessio asks Michael to meet with Barzini, the now dominant Don, signifying his betrayal. The meeting is set for the same day as the baptism of Connie's baby. In a stunning scene, Michael attends the baptism, but has his hitmen murder the other crime family Dons, Mo Green and Tessio. Carlo is killed shortly after, and an enraged Connie accuses Michael of murder in front of his wife Kay. Kay is relieved when he denies the accusations, but as the film ends, she's dismayed when she sees other crime members paying him respect, realizing that Michael has transformed from hero to anti-hero. To be completely honest, I'm usually biased against older films because of poor quality, special effects, pacing, and acting, but The Godfather was a wonderful film to watch and I'm convinced it deserves its title as one of the greatest films of all time. The film had several themes that overlapped and worked synonymously such as loyalty, betrayal, family, power, and crime. As an example, after Carlo marries into the Corleone family, he learns a brutal lesson about loyalty when it's discovered that he beats his wife. In retaliation, he plots to have Sonny killed, and when his involvement is revealed, he pays the ultimate price. In the film, there are many wonderful scenes like that that come around full circle and pay off for viewers. Another example is the excellently executed murder of the other family Dons as Michael attends his godson's baptism. By this point in the film, we've seen Michael transform from a morally good World War II hero to a man seeking revenge, and finally, to a fully fledged mob boss with many details in between. As I said before, I'm usually dissatisfied with the acting in older films, but I was pleasantly surprised by the acting in this one. I think Marlon Brando did a great job of portraying Don Vito Corleone. Considering he wore a custom mouthpiece for his bulldogish look, he was completely understandable and his whisper voice suited his character perfectly. I was also very happy with the performance by James Caan as Sonny. He fit the role and look of a rash, hot-headed individual perfectly. I also enjoyed Al Pacino as Michael. Seeing his transformation from hero to anti-hero was great, and Pacino showed it well with his facial emotions. Every actor that came on screen did a wonderful job portraying their characters, almost as if their characters were written with them in mind. Richard Castellano, Robert Duvall, Sterling Hayden, and Al Lettieri all did amazing jobs in their respective roles as Clemenza, Tom Hagen, Captain McCluskey, and Salazzo. Moving on to the direction and pace, the film was lengthy, but the length of the film worked in its favor. It allowed for the necessary scenes and hardships in Michael's life 
that led to his transformation and acceptance of his position as Dawn. At the beginning of the film, Michael speaks with Kay and tells her he's not like his family members, but as the credits roll, he has chosen to become like his family and keeps his wife in the dark regarding his business. The length of the film may turn away some viewers, but I felt that it helped the subplots of the movie develop. Moving forward, I really enjoyed the score and soundtrack of the film. From the opening wedding and the joyous Italian music to the title theme song, I felt like I was part of the Corleone family. I walked away from the film trying to recap capture the power the soundtrack made me feel. I found myself whispering, he sleeps with the fishes tonight, and I'm gonna make him an offer he can't refuse. The music in this film was composed beautifully and helped bring this Italian-American story to life for me. The dialogue within the film was fun, but when the dialogue needed to be powerful, it was. This is best showcased in the opening scene where Don Corleone receives an assassination request. The dialogue shows one of the darker aspects of immigration to America. Bonacera, another Italian-American, begins his favor with, I believe in America. America has made my fortune and I raised my daughter in an American fashion. I gave her freedom. He then explains that his daughter was brutally beaten by two teenage boys because she refused to have sex with them and now has permanent facial damage and scars. He details how he thought the courts would rule in his favor, but instead they let the boys go free who laughed in his face. He ends his story by saying, I said to my wife, for justice, we must go to Don Corleone. There are many similarly powerful excerpts of dialogue within the film that kept me entertained. For an older film, the cinematography, production design, and special effects are great. Since they still hold up today, I'm assuming they were excellent for the year the movie came out. The film had lovely shots of the wedding, Michael's stay in Sicily, and his godson's baptism. Even the practical effects, such as blood from gunshot wounds, were depicted realistically and nicely. While bloody, the scene with the horse's head was incredible. I know this is probably the longest video on the channel to date, so I'll try to wrap up pretty quickly. Overall, The Godfather presents a wonderful telling of an Italian-American crime drama. There are many intricately woven themes within this three-hour gem, such as loyalty, family, betrayal, and power. The characters are developed nicely, and the movie makes you walk away feeling like a Corleone. For weeks, I couldn't stop listening to the title song and speaking like a mobster. For viewers that haven't seen the film, I think many of them are going to enjoy it. It may not be for everyone, but I encourage you to watch the film and find out for yourself. Revenge is a dish that tastes best when served cold. Thank you for listening to my review of The Godfather. If there's a review you want me to do, leave a comment down below and hit that like and subscribe button. If you agree or disagree with me, also leave a comment. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Lastly, if you want to see some more from me, you can check out my vlogs linked up above or friends with benefits linked down below. My name's Diego and I'll see you soon.